actually made a lot of sense and there was enough differentiation amongst them. And then as you go, you unlock things. We added, uh, we added a, an audio book. We added a launch party. We added a number of things. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that in terms of tactics because I, I, I watched the campaign pretty closely. I'm, I'm a proud member. And, uh, you know, some of the things you, you did in the middle, they weren't announced at the very beginning, but you did them in the middle. So if you could take a few minutes and go through the, the timeline on what you did and why you did it, I think that'd be most helpful for people. I, yeah, I think that, again, be, the beginning of the call, we talked about doing such a campaign being mm-hmm. a, real, a real commitment. So I yep. look at it as, as um, I take it as a serious enterprise unto itself, and we plan it, and we whiteboard it, and we... We draw notes and we, mm-hmm. so our idea was every, uh, and I'm going to answer your question directly in a moment, but I want to just set the stage for it. Uh, we literally architected so that at least every other day, ours was a 30 day, you can set different time frames, but ours was 30 days. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we made certain that at least every other day, so, we were triggering some event. We were unleashing some new energy and creating some new different noise. So that might have been, as an example, um, I would post uh, a, a blog article that I'd written on the Huffington Post. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, planning in advance, I'd never had credentials to, to blog on HuffPost, but I, but I was starting a month ahead of the campaign. 30 mm-hmm. days before the 30 days before the 30 days began, I started thinking, what are the tools that I need? What are the op- opportunities that I need? And I thought, HuffPost, I got to have that. So I mm-hmm. called all my friends. I found out who had access and could turn me on to an editorial member of the team that, that, that could that could review me and either approve me or not. And that's so we did that and we got approved. Mm-hmm. So either I was doing things like an Ask Me Anything live session on Reddit or I was doing a live chat on Twitter with some influencers, or I was um, um, guest blogging for, you know, pre-identified big bloggers in my space, Mm -hmm. or um, I was doing, um, you know, a live event locally uh, or a live call, or I was, you know, we, so we had it so that we were constantly mapping because it's not linear. You don't know where people are going to grab hold and get in the excited. Ah, get okay. But, but it, and it's never a straight line. But we mm-hmm. figured that, um, and you can't measure most of it, unfortunately. It's very hard to track. <laughs> okay. But if you make enough noise from enough different locations, somehow you're going to generate more interest because that one person that's now come across you in more than one environment starts to get curious mm-hmm. um, and and they're and 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 then and then the reverse is true they become not evangelists but they become almost publishers of your of your story so mm-hmm. they're writing they're writing their friends about it or talking to their friends about it or blogging about it or writing little articles we attracted a lot of stuff that we had not you couldn't plan it we didn't know but we had uh, new newspapers from different regions of the U.S. reach out and say, oh, this is interesting. We'd like to write a feature article about it. We got a lot of that. I did um, some radio shows that I had planned and then some that I hadn't planned that just cropped up and invited us yeah. to do short little stints. So you you don't know, but you just have to stay active pretty much every day. Respond to everybody who comments, everybody who posts about you, whether it's on Facebook or on Kickstarter, that personal touch uh, is gold. So that is really important as well. Mm-hmm. That's all background. So wait a minute. Now, what was the question we were just getting to? Oh, stuck in the middle. <laughs> there's a, a, a t- I think you have a chance. It was so much timeline and tactics and how to do all this. I mean, there's, well, there's so many like moving parts. Yeah, and your question is, so that's this. So take everything I just talked about and mush that up against your question, which is at certain points during the campaign, not from the get-go, but later on during the campaign, we announced new things. We added mm-hmm. a new perk. or we. Uh, so it might have been a new perk like um, the audiobook. I had no plans mm-hmm. to do an audiobook. I've never right. done one. I have no idea how to do it. I don't know how expensive it is. Um, 
But I thought, you know, that would be cool. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. And so we would announce to people if, you know, we're, we're so many days away, we're, you know, we're, I, if we can hit this number within the next three days, we're going to give everybody from this point, price point and above, uh, an audio book. Right. Well, that stirs up some interest. People actually do, it turns out, come back in and change their, um, ah. they can upgrade their perk, if you uh-huh. will. If that makes sense. Right. So, yeah, totally. so, and, and plus they tell their friends and blah, blah, blah. So we announced some new things like the audio book. Then we said, you know what? We want to reward everybody who gave literally. And then we want to make sure we're inclusive. You don't want to be hierarchical. Mm-hmm. So we said for everybody who donated $15 or more, which is pretty much everybody. Right. Uh, we had very few people that gave a dollar. Uh, so we basically said for everybody, if we hit X, then, uh, we're going to add a launch party and we're going to do this beautiful live, live event at the writer's boot camp in Santa Monica at Bergamot station. We're going to uh, have food and wine and all, you know, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. uh, please come. We'd love to meet you in person and be able to say thanks. And my whole team will be there and we're going to have our mentors. I pulled in a bunch of mentors. So mm-hmm. I had some, uh, uh, producers and some creators and some other people from film and TV and, and, and the web as well. And I said, you know, here are some really successful, cool, hand-selected folks that are part of our perk uh, ladder uh, as, as mentors. Uh, and they're so excited. They're, they said, no, absolutely. We're all showing up. So they're going to be there and you'll get to meet all these people. Um and we thought that was a lot of fun, and people responded very very nicely to that. We had several hundred people show up at that. Um, so there are these things that you do because you can, because you say, okay, cost benefit. How do I really keep people excited? How do I show them that I really, really, honest to God, appreciate this? I mean, these are total strangers on short notice right. c- coming out of the blue, saying, how can we support you and 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 you use our social footprint to to further your cause and contribute ourselves and do all these things for you. Pretty neat. So yeah. that was yeah, one thing I'm right. gathering from this is that there's there's this, almost like two or three different tracks in your messaging because you can't get on your your in one way if you're going to be doing something in Huffington Post or your blog post or Facebook you're talking you're so telling the same story but you can't be telling the same story for 30 days to all these people because they get bored with it so you're adding new stuff interlacing in between your, your the story that's being retold, right? It's different stories in different ways of telling the story. So you're, you're doing um, blogs and you're doing, and then you've got, you know, within the site itself, you're doing updates, uh, mm-hmm. you're posting updates. And those updates can be text and or video. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so we were pretty active. I think we posted, um, they didn't all occur during the campaign. I think, no, actually, they had to because it locks down. We, I'm looking. We posted 24 updates, so that's not a, an update every day. But man, oh. we poured we poured so much time and, and energy and fun and and gusto into those. That was really important. You're telling your backers, um, mm-hmm. you know how much you care. You're just and you're telling sharing anecdotes and you're sharing your excitement and you're sharing your gratitude and you're and you're telling stories about a particular someone who was in their shoes not long ago, then, you know, you're telling stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that's what you're doing inside of Kickstarter, but you're doing very different kinds of messaging outside and outside. You're really, it's, I think one of the things that people, I mean, the, the, the successful ones get it. Um, you don't want to always be talking about the fact that you're mid campaign on Kickstarter. It's a little bit too marketing heavy. If you, if that's right, if you're a, if you're a one note messenger, right. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, we know that. So I know the clock's ticking and you're at this dollar level. It's like watching Jerry. What's the, uh, you know, tell a, you know, it's like, okay, I see the needle. I see the number. It's, I know the clock's ticking in here off the air in an hour. Okay. Um, but you got to go back to the, the core. You got to go back to why are you there in the first place? 
So you forget mm-hmm. there's a Kickstarter campaign. You start talking about the stuff that's in your book or whatever you care about or with the product or an experience mm-hmm. around developing it. Or, you know, like when we first had this idea and we, or we tripped onto this thing by accident or we met these people and you start telling all these stories. Um, and, and it always brings you back to why you're doing what you're doing. And that's a really, really powerful story that you got to keep infusing. Because it's true, and it's easy to, by the way, it's easy to write about. <laughs> yeah, right. Was, was there any specific, um, you know, psychological uh, triggers or anything to do? You're just doing it all from the heart. You're writing. No, we, we, you know what, we went, we went pretty, we were pretty consistently just, as you say, from the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't really try to overthink this thing too much. Mm-hmm. Um, Morgan, who was really helpful to me. Uh, because she's 26 and really lives on social. And mm-hmm. I, I would say, I would say for a guy from, from the, you know, from the Pleistocene era, I'm probably more attuned to social and some cutting edge tech than, than a lot of people. Uh, you are, yes. I have a, a, just an abiding curiosity and love of it for whatever reason. So I dig getting into these things, but it never, I never, because of my background, because of my, temperament maybe i don't know i like telling stories so that part mm-hmm. and, and and i also just like really like i was i was like a little kid honestly i would look at this every day and go oh my god look at this and i would put up new photos and i would write something and I, but when i would write i wasn't like a three sentence thing it was like i'd write and and really get into our intentions about what's going to happen in the next week or how I feel about what's going on in the last week or, or the call that I got that day or memories about this film or that writer or this, you know, situation. And I just, it was like, whatever came up, I wrote it. So I sometimes it the stories were, were about the book. Sometimes the story were about your campaign. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's happening within that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was a little bit of, it was a little bit of all of those colors. And I think that's kind mm-hmm. of mi- mixing it up that way. Uh, it, it, probably a good thing. It certainly yeah. seemed to work well for us. I'll put it that way. <laughs> that's all. That's all we can relate to. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking of the other things besides besides not connecting and not being passionate with your your message and your audience. Is there any other pitfalls that people should avoid when doing a crowdfunding campaign? Um. Well, the, I think the pitfalls are the inverse of a lot of what we've talked about. I, mm-hmm. Number one, well, I think there's a bunch. I, I, I think there are people who go on there and naively say, I'm going to raise, you know, I, I, no one knows me. I don't have a huge following. Um, mm-hmm. I've got, you know, several hundred friends on Facebook and I've got, you know, some people on Twitter, but it's not a big, uh, you know, it's not like I've spent years building this up. Uh, right. And um, I'm not a public person, but I'm going to go out and raise a quarter of a million dollars on my first ever social campaign. <laughs> um, you know, probably not going to, you know, I mean, it, it could, by the way, in some areas it can work. In some areas, if you have a piece of tech, because yeah, crowd, fund, crowd, 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 crowdfunding works really, really well in some areas and really, really badly. Actually, ironically, books are one of the weakest categories. <laughs> and it's one of, and it's, and it's one, well, yeah, I mean, but yeah. it's what I had. So yeah. it's, but, but when you're thinking about what should I ask, what should be my goal? Um, I specifically chose a number that I thought if I can't hit that, then I am really, really bad. I, I thought it was not an aggressive goal. Um, and I, and, and even then I there were times I was sweating it at the beginning of the first week. It's like, Oh, this could be a mistake. But yeah. Had I said twenty five or fifty thousand is my goal, I would have been in deep anxiety. I didn't. I wanted to be free to uh, not be obsessed by that. So I think one of the one of the mistakes people make is is just not recognizing it's better to put a number on to your campaign that you really believe for whatever reasons you have sat mm-hmm. down, you've had a, a a little bit of soul searching, you've done a little penciling, you. Figure out the size of your database and so on and so forth, and um, and I can hit that number, and then that gives you the room to to exceed it, right? It's just mm-hmm. interesting. Right. Um, yeah. So that would be one thing. The other thing is I see a lot of videos, and video is very important. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much the first thing most people look at if they're at all interested in what it is that you're doing. And again, some categories more than, you know, creative content, short films, web series, feature films, all of that stuff is really, really strong <clears throat> on a number of these platforms, including Kickstarter. Tech is hugely successful. <clears throat> um, again, not all tech, but if it's good, if it's compelling. Okay. Um, but I think that the video is really, really important in all categories. That's where if people are at all interested. They one of the first things they do is they check it out to see if they uh, get excited, if they can read your excitement, if they if they feel like they like you, or if you've made it fun and if you surprise them. Yeah, they kind of make a petition the first few seconds on a video, don't they? Before they even read below anything, anything below it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, you know, we decided. We thought a lot about the video and thought, oh, we could do it. You know, there's 27 different ways to do it. Baskin Robbins, 31 yeah. flavors. And right. uh, at the end of the day, I said, no, you know what? And then actually the day I did it, I had a really bad cold, but we had committed to doing it that day. <laughs> I said, all I want to do is I want to sit in a chair and I want to look at the camera and I want to be very much, you know, in my PJs, jeans and a sweater. Yep. Uh, and I want to talk to the camera and I don't want anything scripted. I just... Mm -hmm. I want to go with whatever comes to me, and I, I want three minutes of quiet before we start filming, so I can just sit there and 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 really focus in on, you know, why am I in this moment? What what brought me here? What do I care about? What do I want to come out of it? And then I just, you know, and it wasn't one take. It's it's never, you know, no one's that good. So, um, well, Frank Sinatra was that good, but. But I, um, but, but, but I, you know, so we ended up doing this, um, over the course of, uh, this three minute video was edited out of, I don't know, I probably talked for like close to an hour on and off. We'd start, mm -hmm. start, wow. start and stop the camera, but I would, you know, and then we'd goof around for 10 minutes and then we'd shoot a little bit more. So, right. um, I think now you, you spent most of your, most of your life behind the camera, but that's, I mean, you still are very comfortable, obviously as a public speaker and all that stuff. What about somebody who's, you know, a total mouse? I mean, they have no, no background, no experience at all, and they're just, they come across awkward on camera. Should they get coaching? Should they just go ahead and be awkward and be real? What, what do you think about that? Uh, I think they should, yeah, I think they should be who they are. Okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being awkward. Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in fact, you, if someone's really nervous and awkward and you can feel it, but they're trying to act like all polished, it's yeah. not going to work. Because it's not, yeah. You know, there's uh, there's an old story. I'll tell you, it's actually not a story. It's it's science of fact. Uh, if you approach a if a horse is approached uh, by someone who is really angry, mm -hmm. uh, they're wow. on the inside they're raging, and on the outside they're expressing loud anger. That horse, mm -hmm. you can they can walk right up to that horse, and that horse is completely comfortable. You, know, you can mm -hmm. pet the horse. The horse ain't going nowhere. If, 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 however, that same horse is approached by someone who is raging angry on the inside and sweet talking the horse on the outside, the horse will spook and turn and walk or run away. Wow. And this has been proven again. And why? Because a horse has a brain the size of a walnut and a heart the size of a watermelon. And you think about the energetic field, the, the intelligence field of the heart and of the brain. And we've, mm -hmm. of course, seen these studies now. It's not new information. Uh, they're, they're really the opposite of us. Our brain is so much larger than our heart. Mm -hmm. uh, but a horse uh, has, is ruled by its emotional intelligence, its heart intelligence. And, and it, 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 there's no way to fool a horse, whether you're aligned or not aligned. It's just it mm -hmm. knows. So um, I, I say that because I think there's a lot of truth to that for us. We're animals. We have instincts. We sense things. Sure. So if I watch someone and they're all, you know, I'm Mr. Swank and cool, but on the inside you can tell they're really nervous as shit. That's yep. not going to work. What I want, what here's, here's the trick that I would offer. Not a trick, but a, a little bit of a device. If someone's uncomfortable, and frankly, most people, just number one, recognize that most people are. Well, I bring it up, yeah. Uh, and, and then what, what, what I always try and tell people is look at, look at the camera. Before you look at the camera, think, who is that one person? First of all, you can only talk to one person. Right. So I set the ground rules. You can only talk, 
Uh, literally, there is only one person on the planet that you're allowed to talk to, and you have to choose that person before we start right. rolling film. And there's something I call the empath empathy telescope. Um, we can put ourselves in the shoes of one person. We cannot put ourselves in the shoes of many. Okay. So we can only have to empathize one person at a time, not thousands. So, um, you know, that's why we love stories about the individual facing a challenge who used, um, you know, uh, who, who, you know, it, it, it's very compelling to us. Whereas if you don't see films where the protagonist is a whole group of people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. so, so, so anyway, um, if you think about the empathy telescope, that's one reason. But here's the, the other reason, and this is really emotionally relevant for the nervous person who might feel awkward in front of a camera. Who is that one person that makes you feel, and it could be a family member, it could be your best friend, um, it's not important who, who they are. What's important is how they make you feel. If this is someone, who in your life makes you feel truly comfortable and happy mm -hmm. and who you believe really care, ha, takes your interest to heart, who cares about you. So you're comfortable with them and you know that they care about you. Well, that's the person that is the camera. Right. And I am only going to tell that one person This is a private moment. I'm telling that one person from the deepest part of me, why I'm doing this, how I got here, what I care about, what I'd like to see happen how excited I would be if only. And why I think this is really not only doable, but I was born to this. Um, and if I tell that person that story, it doesn't matter how many people hear it, voyeuristically. But mm -hmm. your delivery is enhanced so much if you give yourself permission to just play pretend and assume that kind of intimacy. Intimacy, because you think about it, one person at a time is watching you around the world or online. Mm. They get that intimacy. They may not consciously think of it that way, but that's right. what they receive. So, and it, but it, but it, but that doesn't. And I don't say it because the no, nervous person will become unnervous. Maybe a little bit less so, though. Right? That trick may help them relax and go. Oh, I get to tell my brother. Right. What's really going on here? That's cool. So I might fool myself into being a less, a little bit less nervous. Mm -hmm. But the other, the flip side of that is equally valuable, which is that intimacy and the truth, the authenticity, the genuineness, the, the undeniable raw reality of what's being said. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if they're stuttering and, 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 you know, scratching the, the skin off their knee while they're doing it. If I believe them, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Very good. In terms of the, you mentioned a couple of things earlier about, um, you know, Huffington Post and Reddit and radio and stuff. Um, how do you get on all those media outlets? Uh, well, some of them, uh, some of them you can prearrange. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mentioned that I didn't have credentials to, publish a blog on Huffington Post until I went out and got them, knowing I would want right. them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, di I didn't wait until the campaign started. I did that. That was my homework in advance. Uh, um, and, and the same is true. You just map and say, well, you know, what area are you in? So, you know, it depends on what you're doing, what kind of product or what kind of thing you're promoting. But I would go on, on uh, one of the things I do is try and um, do a spreadsheet and I say, okay, one category, for example, is bloggers. Who are mm -hmm. the top 10 or 20 bloggers in my area? Mm -hmm. And I start communicating with them, you know, 30, 45 days, 60 days out. Um, and I make sure that I have some kind of reciprocity with them. I'm retweeting them. I'm asking them questions. Their whole audience begins to see me in conversation with that person on a regular basis starting a month out or, two, or mm -hmm. more. Um, I would ask them to look at what I'm doing and maybe write about it. I would ask if I could post a guest blog on their blog, both directions, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would look at um, doing an AMA on Reddit, very dynamic. And again, not all things are right for all campaigns. Sure. Um, so you kind of figure that piece out. 
but I would uh, I would do the same thing. I would look for the big influencers on Twitter who have the big followings on Twitter that are really in my zone, my zip code, mm-hmm. so to speak. And I would reach out to them. I mean, it's, it's all about relationship building. Yep. Um, you can do press releases and all that. I I didn't. I don't. I'm not a big believer. It doesn't excite me. I, I think people excite me. So I want to go um, intentionally reach out to someone and say, look, I'm not calling to flatter you. It's just that you're like the most obviously one of the most knowledgeable followed, uh, you know, experts in this area. And this is why I'm in. This is what I'm doing. I'd love to have a five minute conversation. Do you have time? And then tell them what you're doing and, and how it could be a win win and, and why it would be so flattering. And, and you honor them as your mentor during that phone call for, you know, what they know. And, but, um, so I mean, it's hard to do it without a specific example in mind, but, um, and I didn't know because, you know, I'm going after a niche creative. Uh, mine was like, uh, not just even a creative audience. It was technically more specific sp- screenwriting. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, That's it should true. be, the author should be, it should be a niche out. It shouldn't be being, you know, broad based books. Of course, if you're a new author, it's hard to do those. So. Yeah. But you also have to realize, wait a minute, there's probably, as a, if you're, you're an author writing about X, well, there are people who are going to follow you because of the X. There are going to be people who are following you because they want to become a first time or a second time author. There are going to be people who want to just see if it works. You know, I mean, there's a lot of pe- reasons why people might attach mm-hmm. and follow you uh, or, or donate or participate. Is a lot of times it's nothing to do with them. They have a relative, they have a friend who's doing exactly something similar to what you're doing. And that lights right. them up and they go, ah, that's like my buddy. I'm going to support that. So you never exactly, you can't second guess who your audience is. You got to use it for a, a, a wide cast of net. You really just can't uh, narrow it down when you're doing um, your campaigning. You're no. to anybody and everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, I, even in terms of outlets, um, I had people who contributed um, and were really excited and started writing to me, and it turned out they were, this happened a handful, at least a handful of times, they were parents whose kids had creative aspirations, and they were trying to figure out how to support their kids. Right. So, you you know, you just, it's 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 beautiful, the stuff that comes up, You but you just can't ever um, predict who these folks are, and where they, mm-hmm. why they come, and where they come from, and all of that. I think, again, it really just comes down to, if you connect, if you speak to the to the to from the heart, if you speak from the gut, if you write that into your text, if you figure out perks that are like that you know that are that are fun and and relevant and um you know you make sure that you've got enough of them but not too many that they're spread out by price points that they're the kinds of experiences that you're offering them are decidedly you know there's a ladder like they're not the same. Mm-hmm. but enhanced. Um, if you do all that, I think that, you know, it's, it's a fabulous, you think there's one of you and there's a whole world online. Uh, what are the odds? And it's just about being activist and not worrying about, was that a good hour? You know, did, did, did I invest that hour or that unit of effort in the best possible way? You can't know that you, all you can do, it's kind of like physical exercise and health and longevity you know, life is about movement and so is success in business and so is success online and, and, and in crowdfunding. It's, you got to stay in motion. You got to make it, you got to conduct an orchestra and you got to start before the campaign actually goes live. And, right. And I would say well, back, well, to your, back to your point, I just huh? to interrupt for one sec. The, you know, you said something and, and I think it's really key is the testing piece is, um, you know, we're all too close to our own stuff. And um, myself included. And when it comes right down to it, I had to go and show this video to, um, you know, I, I sort of had handpicked half a dozen or so people that I trust. I trust them mm-hmm. because they're smart. I trust some of them because <clears throat> they are knowledgeable in the area where I'm active. And mm-hmm. several of them because they're knowledgeable but not at all in the area, right? Mm, I wanted people okay. who who just had no friggin' context, 
but could just from a, from a, from a, from, a, from their humanity as a really bright person uh, who had good uh, instincts say, here's what I see. And if I could do that with my text and with my video and with the perks, and I had them look at all of it, I, I sort of said, here are the different things I need you to look at. Um, and, and that gave me ultimately the confidence to, uh, to keep it kind of simple. Mm -hmm. My case, that was my choice was to go, yeah, I think I'm going with the, this, this style of video that's really, really just me sitting in a chair. And people yeah. commented on that. There was a lot of feedback that said that's what we really liked about it. There was, there was no graphics or fast cut animations or look over here, look over there. It's all, you know, no, it was just a, you, a guy sitting in a chair saying, this is what matters to me. And I'd love you to be along for the ride. Yeah, I, I liked it. You know, I, you know, I, I thought it was really, from, like I said, from the heart. It was right, right to the point. There, you don't need any flash when you when you're passionate. That so was good. Yeah, passion good. does. Passion will win out. So I, that would, mm -hmm. you know, and even the person who's awkward and nervous, you get them talking about what they really care about. Yeah. You know, even an introvert. Mm -hmm. Even even an introvert in the right circumstances will forget that they're an introvert for a moment. <laughs> 